Chapter 59 Flashing lights appeared outside the mall. It was like a replay of what had happened after Adam had found the bodies the first time. Only this time, Amelia was alive. Wally stood next to him, watching the mall burn. Firefighters worked hard to put it out. Emergency personnel tended to Amelia this time, rather than wheeling her corpse out on a stretcher. Overall, it was a good day. The police are already at Bob's house, Wally said. It's only a matter of time before they catch him. Adam, a female voice said behind him. He turned and saw Tori standing there with a bald man he didn't recognize. This is Amelia's husband. The man shook Adam's hand. She's over there, Adam said as he pointed to an ambulance a few feet away. Thank you, the man said, then walked over to his wife. She seemed startled to see him. Then she cried and hugged him. Adam cried too. Tori rubbed his back. I was almost too late, he said through sobs. But you weren't, Tori said. You were just in time. You saved her. Adam had been on time, hadn't he? He had to remind himself he was in the past. It wasn't 1990, but it was still the past. And it was time to go back. Miller, I want to come back, he whispered. He knew he was in trouble as soon as he removed the sleep mask. Tabret was standing over him, her arms crossed. What did you do? she asked. And don't you dare mention anything about toys. There was no use lying. She clearly knew something. I had to, Tabret. This woman died because I didn't believe her. I had to save her. Adam, you broke the rules. She pulled him out of the tub. He covered his shame. I'm afraid you can't come back here anymore. Are you serious? I just saved a life. She only died a few hours ago. It can't possibly affect the universe that much. When you do stuff like this, Adam, you attract the attention of something you don't want knowing about you. They were outside the bathroom now. You mean the cry, Mother? Tabret stopped dragging him. What do you know about that? He didn't answer. He simply stood there with his clothes in his arms. You've seen it, haven't you? I don't know, he said quietly. I think so, but I never took off my eye mask. Tabret shook her head slowly. You can never come back here again, Adam. I'm sorry. Why not? What is this cry mother? Who came up with that stupid name? What are you? I'm an alien, she said bluntly. I'm an angel. I'm from another world that looks down on this world in a petri dish from a microscope. Adam was stunned by the torrent of words. You're the Joker, he whispered. Excuse me? She calmed down a bit. The Joker. He kept giving different reasons for how he got the scars on his face. Not all of them could be true, but at least one of them probably was. Is that the case with you? She didn't respond. Instead, she grabbed his arm again and started dragging him toward the kitchen door. But he wouldn't allow it. He wrenched his arm from her grasp and ran back to the bathroom. He closed and locked the door, then jumped into the tub. He forgot to grab a mask, so he closed his eyes tight, then pulled the drain plug. He wasn't planning on coming back. Not until he took care of some business. He wanted to help Ollie to prevent him from going down his deadly path. He wanted to find and kill Bob before he could kill all those people at the mall. And if he had time, he would keep his father from committing suicide. Fuck the universe. Adam had made a significant change by saving Amelia from death. He could do it again. Tabret managed to get the door open, but it was too late. The tub was completely empty. No water no time-traveling liquid, and no Adam Young. Oh boy, that's a first. This has been Crying in Dreams, 
written and read by Jerry Hart. <laughs>